Well, hello everyone. My name is Lee Nichols and I'm the editor in chief and associate publisher of Hydrocarbon Processing Magazine. And I'd like to welcome all of you to Hydrocarbon Processing's Refined View. So many of you might be asking, what is Refined View? Well, within this segment, what we like to do is we like to sit down with an author of a recent hydrocarbon processing article. And we like to discuss the article's topic as well as just dive down into some of the technologies that are affecting the downstream processing industry. So joining me today is Carmen Grevy. She leads the cyber and digital security for Siemens Oil and Gas. So her article is titled Cybersecurity Visibility and Resilience, Keys to Protecting HSC and Margins and Operations. Now this was featured in the cybersecurity section of Hydrocarbon Processing's February issue. Now the article is up on the Hydrocarbon Processing site. You can view it, it is open access. You also will be receiving a link where it will take you directly to the article. And of course, you can read that at your convenience. So first off, without further ado, joining us remotely uh, by way of safe social distancing is Carmen. <laughs> so Carmen, how are you today? Hi, Lee. I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. It's really great to share this space with you. Excellent. Excellent. Now, before we dive down into your article, which is... Uh, great importance right now in the industry. Can you just provide the viewers a little bit more about your role at Siemens? And then of course, uh, what uh, your company's role is in cybersecurity in the oil and gas industry. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so I'm lucky enough to work for Siemens Power and Gas and I lead the cybersecurity solutions and services for our oil and gas vertical. So that entails helping our customers really bring about the security to their operational technology through a set of cybersecurity protection, detection, and response services. Great, great. So I want to go ahead and dive down now into your article. So the threat of cybersecurity incidents, as you very well know, is growing. So why is the topic of cybersecurity so relevant today? Yeah, you know, it, the truth is that it's always been relevant. And I think that it, it's been primarily a focus in the IT space and the inf information technology space. And that's just because, you know, a lot, a lot of companies deal with IT systems. They, they tend to be systems that we upgrade very, every three years or so. So we, we are upgrading and talking about IT systems far more often than probably OT system, which is the operational technology. But we are seeing both a convergence of IT and OT with automation and digitalization. And also there's actually a, 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 a growth in cyber attacks in the OT space. And so that's really made this topic grow. But today actually, and we're all facing the circumstances with the COVID-19 situation where a lot of folks are going remote. And that brings, you know, a set of risks, the risk parameters that while they've always been there, it's now probably more um, top of mind for folks. And that deals directly with how do we keep our systems safe? How are we able to access them remotely while practicing good OT cybersecurity? Excellent. And, and we're going to get to the COVID stuff because I got some yeah. questions on that as well. I mean, that's what it's on everybody's mind. So, so. I want to jump into to, to the OT side of it that you mentioned. Now, the landscape, the landscape uh, threat for operational technology is inevitably changing. So how well are operators provide, uh, are, are operators today, how well prepared are they? Yeah, you're absolutely right. The OT threat landscape is expanding and that's because of the digitalization efforts. So how well prepared are they? Well, I, we actually run, uh, we did a survey with the Pineman Institute where the same folks who are uh, deploying digitalization efforts reported that um, about 66% of them don't feel like they have the right resources to deploy OT cybersecurity. So there's a lot of companies out there who are doing their, the, the good effort in terms of staying cyber, cyber uh, resilient and cyber vigilant at the OT side. But I do think that we can be doing more. And often the control side of the house is a set it and forget it mentality where we set the asset and we let it run its life and not really sort of think about the, the control side of things or the automation side of things. And that, and when we think about it, if we do think about it, it's not often with the mindset of a cybersecurity. 
So I do think that that, um, that mindset is changing, but I don't think it's changing as rapidly as it could be. Okay. And now that kind of jumps in then to the next question is, so is cybersecurity then a challenge that can be solved with technology? By it can fire, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> it can most certainly be solved with technology, but I would say not only with technology. Okay. So a cybersecurity deployment at the OT level will definitely um, deploy some technologies. It'll definitely deploy more protective solutions to, to things to, to prevent an attack, things to detect, and obviously technology to respond. But that only gets you so far. That's actually protecting the assets, right? We also have to talk about people. Uh, we also have to talk about training and the or organization overall. So it's, we can definitely fight it with technology, but we can also offer training to, to folks, right? On how do, you, how, do we became, how do we remain cyber vigilant with our people and our enterprise? No, that's that's a great point. And so I, I want to jump back then to discussion of operators in general. So now this is probably going to be the most critical item that we're going to discuss today. And of course, that is, what are the steps that operators can take to safeguard against cybersecurity incidents? Yeah. So what we like to offer are offered up to people in terms of what to do. First and foremost, we have to be preventive about attacks. And that means that we actually have to deploy protection to our assets. So things like hardening, patch management, you know, like the, you know, we, we patch our phones and our laptops every day. And the same needs to be for our control systems and our assets, right? So this sort of good cyber hygiene needs to absolutely be there. And I think once we have that, then we follow it up with monitoring. So now we have the protected and the uh, prevention side. Now we're monitoring for attacks, for incidents. And by monitoring, you probably will end up identifying potential incidents. And then the next step becomes, how do we respond to an incident, right? How do we prevent it from getting so far down the operation to a potential shutdown, but we're actually able to react quickly and limit it, its effect. And then we, we circle that up with training and, and a cyber program for the organization so they know how to behave if an incident happens, right? How to prevent, how can we take personal responsibility that we don't touch the system or install things in the system that could potentially harm the system. So that's, that's what we would recommend in terms of that process. But first and foremost, there has to be a focus on what we call cyber hygiene. Excellent. Perfect. Now, I, I do want to jump back because, of course, we have to uh, address uh, uh, the current environment that we're in right now, where many professionals mm -hmm. in the industry are, are working remotely. So the big question is, is how does this impact security in general? Now, to me, it seems like the current environment is pretty much ripe for cyber criminals to exploit vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. It is, it is because what's happening is that folks are forced to do remote, remote connections, right? And what I see is that the, the risk is, is, is I guess, I, I mentioned that it's more top of mind now, but it's, it's a precursor to being remote, right? So where before there was a lot of digitalization efforts and you know, oftentimes cyber was a part of those digitalization and, and we, our position as cyber should always be part of digitalization efforts. But now more than ever, folks are connecting, folks are accessing a, a, um, assets, they're diagnosing their assets remotely and all that sort of, you know, presents a new risk. Uh, it's a risk that's always been there, but for sure it's a bit more uh, prevalent now and more relevant now because there's just an increase in connectivity. Um, so yeah, it does present a unique situation because just the rush to remote access is, is, you know, greater now than ever before. And so is the risk of cybersecurity, right? The, you know, bad actors are out there knowing that folks are connecting remotely and definitely want to take advantage of that. And so for sure, we would recommend to, to, st to put some practices in place to prevent bad actors from accessing systems and causing damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was going to be my next question is how these, 
how an operator or even a company in general can just safeguard their systems during that. Yeah. Because if I'm somebody that, I guess, monitoring some type of asset remotely, but I'm at my kitchen table, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> I am now, is there some type of safeguard that I as uh, an operator can put in place um, uh, to help safeguard against vulnerabilities like that? Yeah, yeah, and there and there is, you know, the, those have been around for a while. Um, I think now it's it's critical that those things get installed and and prevent attacks. And so there's definitely a lot of, of good solutions out there to help to help customers in the situation, which is being remote and then staying safe. Yeah, that's okay. So have them call Siemens. That's what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Most certainly, we're happy to help. You know. It's, Siemens is in a unique position to provide cybersecurity. And, and, and the reason why is because it's not just about the technology or the solution that you're gonna install to help prevent it, but it's about how that solution or service integrates with the equipment, with the asset, right? With the actual turbines, compressors. So Siemens sits in a unique opportunity where we understand the actual product, the, 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 the turbine, the rotating equipment that sits in the plant. We understand that. We also understand the cyber part of it and how those two need to be connected. And then on top of that, you know, running an op entire operation, our, we ourselves are becoming more digital every day. So we take these practices to heart. Um, but, but yeah, so, you know, there's a whole lot of great companies that are out there that are providing cybersecurity solutions. And that's, that's amazing. Um, and good for them for doing that and good for the companies that are reaching out to them. What's unique again about Siemens is that we have this connection to the rotating equipment that not all cybersecurity companies have and we can safely integrate those two components. Excellent. Yeah. And that kind of goes to my, my last point that I really wanted to ask you about, because I think with so many type of companies that want to install some type of cybersecurity program, uh, or even a digital technology in general, of course, the big question is, okay, so what's my return on investment? So with my last question, I'd kind of like to get your opinion on, so what is the ROI of cybersecurity? Yeah, you know, it's a great question. And it's one that with, with digital deployment, which is very often focused on efficiencies, there's an ROI, right? I, I am going to go digital on this part of my process and I'm going to see efficiencies or productivity gains. With cybersecurity, it, it works a bit different because the ROI is on the cost avoidance of an incident happening. Mm -hmm. So if we don't, it's a cost of not doing it, right? So if we don't do cyber and we have an incident, it could, it could potentially cost an operation upwards of a million dollars a day if they have to find alternate production capability. So the cost of being down as, as a result of a cyber incident is, is that. So I would say the return of investment is more of a, we get a look at cybersecurity more of a, of a, of a no, cost avoidance, right? And, and keeping our operations running. So it's the cost of being down for a day. The, the what if scenarios. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that can be a really bad rabbit hole to go down sometimes. So yeah, I've seen what, yeah. I've seen what cyber incidents and how much it can actually cost certain certain companies. It's sometimes astronomical, which I'm it sure really you've seen is. in your work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really is. You know, and the, and and by that same token, the cost of cyber solutions is very inexpensive. Mm -hmm. um, we're you know we're we're not talking millions of dollars. We're talking about. Um, an investment that protects, it does the right thing in terms of, you know, help prevent uh, attacks and then also help monitor attacks. So the cost of having a cyber program is significantly low in comparison to what a, a cyber incident can cost a company. So you're, yeah, it's exactly right. I think the, it's, a, it's the right investment for availability and reliability. Excellent. Well, Carmen, I can't thank you enough for your time today. Um, before we leave, I know uh, the viewers, of course, are going to have access to your article. Um, yeah. But if they have more information, or if they want more information, more data, maybe some case studies or something like that on how Siemens can actually help their cybersecurity efforts, is, is there a specific place that they should go to? to get yes, more information definitely. Yes, I do have information. That obviously, they can contact me directly. My information is in the article as well as well as our Siemens website. 
um, where they can access information directly about cybersecurity and case studies. But I would love to, to, to talk to them and, and you know, we're of the position is our passion is um, the safety and security of our, of our customers. So if it's just exchanging information or, or questions that they want answered, we're not here to just talk about, um, you know, sell Siemens, but rather promote a safe uh, cybersecurity focused operational technology solutions. Excellent. Well, again, thank you for joining us, uh, giving us a couple minutes of your day, because uh, it, it's such a it's such a timely and very crucial topic in this industry, especially with what's you know the current environment they're in right now. So, um, I do highly suggest uh, that you check out Carmen's article. It's in the February issue. Like I said, there will be a link, so it'll take you right to it. It's open access, so anyone can view it. Um, and with that, we want to thank all of you for viewing another edition of Hydrocarbon Processing's Refined View, and we hope you have a great rest of your week. Thanks again, thank you, Carmen. Lee. Thank you. Bye-bye.